Hey everyone, my name is Hugo and welcome back to my channel. I've done two videos about movies now and now I want to talk about another passion of mine which is video games. Now I love collecting video games as well as movies. I have games of different consoles. I have PS1, SNES, Game Boy, PS2. Um, but today I'm mostly going to talk about my favorite console to collect for and that is the PlayStation 3. Uh, I've got one right here. This isn't my the, the original PS3 I got, which I'm going to talk about it in a second. And yeah, without further ado, I'm just going to get into it. So first, I want to backtrack a little bit, talking about how I got into video games, the first consoles I got, uh, gaming as a kid for me, how I got into collecting video games. And so yeah, so it all started, uh, so it all started when I was a kid. Ever since I remember, we had a Super Nintendo console. And so just for your information, I was born in 1997. So when I started gaming, let's say I was four years old, it was 2001. Uh, the PS1, for example, was already out. Um, Nintendo had moved on to GameCube and uh, Nintendo 64. And so, but we were still with the SNES, which was my dad's console. It was his console. He bought it brand new um, when he was younger. And yeah, he just passed it on to us with all his games. They're still at his house. And most of them are in box. And yeah, that's what we played. We had lots of fun. Our, probably the most amount of hours that we spent was in Zelda a Link to the Past. And back then, you used to be able to go to thrift stores, and you, we found SNES games in box, out of box, for like 50 cents a piece, a euro a piece. You would go to yard sales. People were getting rid of them for like a euro, two euros. Now, of course, collecting is very trendy, and prices went skyrocket for Nintendo. So that's reason number one why I'm not collecting for Nintendo already. So yeah, we spent lots of hours on the Super Nintendo. We had Game Boys as well. Uh, the original gray ones that you had to hold into the light to be able to see anything that you were doing. And we used those mostly to go on the road trip to Portugal. Every year we went on a vacation to Portugal. It was like two, three days in the car with my, my four siblings at the time. So yeah, that was hell on earth if we couldn't keep ourselves occupied. So and that, that was the case until I was like 11, 20, 12 years old, more or less. I got from my, well, I didn't get it. I bought it from him. Uh, one of my classmates in sixth grade was getting rid of his PS1 because he had a PS2. And he told me, hey, I'm not really using it. I'm mostly using my PS2 and I can play my PS1 games on there anyway. He was also getting rid of a whole bunch of games. I think there was like 30 something games with it. I ended up paying 20 bucks for the 30 games plus the console. And uh, my dad bought it for, for us. So that was our next console. It was PlayStation 1. We had lots of fun with that. We were mind blown by the 3D graphics and uh, we, had, we, we could play FIFA uh, against each other because we were used to, and I'll put some gameplay here. Uh, we were used to playing games like Super Soccer, if you're familiar with that, or Superstar Soccer. And yeah, and then we moved to like FIFA 98 with like the music by, well, I think it was Blink-182. And yeah, we were just mind blown and uh, we had Tekken instead of Street Fighter 2. And yeah, we were absolutely mind blown by the difference of, uh, of graphics because we were not used to that uh, whatsoever. And... Yeah, we had the PS1 for a while, and then at a yard sale around our corner, uh, which happens every year, we go every year, we found, I think I was like 14-something years old, uh, PlayStation 2 for sale. And they were asking 6 euros, it came with two games, FIFA Street and Ratatouille, and it had two controllers and I think one memory card or something, I don't I quite remember, but I still have that one that we bought here. It's this one. It was the Fat Edition. I remember that they were asking six euros for everything. And my dad just went like, how about three? And they were just sure. And so we got two games, two controllers, and this console for three euros. Mind you, it was in like a big shopping bag, like just thrown together. And we're pretty sure it was either dried mud, but we're fairly sure it was actual like shit. 
uh, in the bag. It wasn't on the PlayStation or anything. Uh, the FIFA Street case was all like messed up, and the Ratatouille game was without a case. It was just like loose in the bag, and so it wasn't in great condition. But like we we deep cleaned it, and uh, yeah, it still works. I I still play it to this day. So yeah, we got a PS PS2, and at that same yard sale we got, which I also still have, Alien Hominid. Um, which is one of the hardest games I've ever played. I don't think I've ever played a game, well, maybe, but it's very hard, trust me. So I got this for a euro. Uh, this is worth, I think, like 30 bucks some, something now. And so that's that's something I'm going to get into later, the pricing of everything. Uh, but yeah, I got this complete in box. But the problem with the PS2 was that at the time, you wouldn't find a lot of PS2 games in thrift stores or anything, which is where we got our games. And yeah, so we ended up still playing mostly the PS1. Um, and every now and then we got a PS2 games and we were playing that, of course. And I'm not saying PS2 is a bad console. I love the PS2, but mostly we were still playing our PS1 games because we just had way more. Then fast forward to, I think, three years later, we got finally... A PS3. It wasn't this one. I got the PS3 when I was 16, 17 years old from my older sister. And it was because she was getting a PS4 and she was like, it's getting dust. So if you guys want it, uh, like want to borrow it on loan, she said, but she never asked for it back. So we were just, we, we got the PS3 and we got like a whole stack of games. And yeah, that's that's how, uh, how we got into the PS3. Yeah, we were playing the PS3 a lot. We were mind blown because, yeah, we were playing some PS2, but the jump from PS2 to PS3 was, was already huge, let alone we were still mostly playing the PS1. So the jump from that to the PS3 was, yeah, it was crazy to us. We, we, we truly, at the time, thought that wasn't possible. And we were playing games like Gran Turismo 1 on the PS1, and then all of a sudden you're playing like games like Need for Speed Hot Pursuit on the PS3. And we thought back in the day that, yeah, going from a racing game on the SNES to Gran Turismo 1, whoa, graphics are never going to look better than this, et cetera, et cetera. And then you come to the PS3, and that's like the first HD console, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not lying. Um, maybe the Xbox was still. But it was our first HD uh, console, yeah, and we were just absolutely mind-blown by the graphics and the quality of the games that was on there. Then I turned 19, and for my birthday, I got the PS4. And yeah, I love the PS4. It's also one of my favorite, I think it's probably my second favorite uh, PlayStation. Yeah, I love the PS4. The reason why I love the PS4 so much is, uh, as well as the PS3, I, that's when I started working like as a student, so I got like a little side gig and I got my own money, so I was able to buy my own games. As opposed to before that, the games I had, it was all onto my parents, like if I was going to get them as a gift or they found something at the thrift store or we would, I found something at the thrift store and I'm like, Daddy, can I, can I please have this? Uh, so yeah, uh, the, with the PS3, I had my own money and sometimes I could go buy my own games. And then... Fast forward to the PS5 release, I got that uh, on day one, I had a pre-order, uh, so I had the PS5 uh, very early on. Uh, that was the first console I ever had on release. And yeah, and then a couple of years later, I think I bought the Switch when I was traveling a lot to Switzerland and, and America. So uh, that's why I got the Switch as well, and I love that one as well. So now I'm going to talk a little bit more about why exactly I love the PS3 so much as opposed to the PS4 or the PS2 or 1 or whatever. So as I said before, a big reason is because the jumping quality for us. Um, and I just remember that like very right now nostalgic feeling of just being so blown away by some of the graphics of these games. And especially games like racing games of FIFA or Uncharted or something. Um, just the quality, the amount of games. We had like a whole stack um, that we got right away from my sister. So we just had so much to play. And I also had a lot of time back then because I was in my last year of high school and I was like going to college. Uh, so 
I had I had time. Uh, if you don't know, in Belgium, when you're in college, you most of the time live at home, and so yeah, I, I just had a lot of time on my hands. Another reason is the amount of co-op games there were. I remember just playing a lot of co-op games on the SNES and on the PlayStation One because me and my brothers are always playing together. So. On the PS3, there were also a lot, and I just remember a lot of gaming sessions that was just me and my brothers with two con controllers, and we were able to play together, and that was just really nice. And they don't do that anymore, and that was kind of the last console that had a lot of couch co-op. Of course, it still exists, but it's just way less now. And so, yeah, that's also, again, one of the many memories I have about the PS3, is just playing a lot of hours on that console with my brothers. Uh, games like the Lego games or Disney Infinity, um, Skylanders, like all split screen, of course, FIFA racing games. And yeah, all games that you can just play like the two of you. The PS3 for us was also our introduction to online multiplayer. I know the PS2 had a version of online multiplayer, but it was kind of, yeah, like difficult to figure it out. We never had it. I also didn't have internet. Um, the first time we had internet at our home or access to internet was when I was like 17, 18, when we got the PS3. So that's our, that was our introduction to the online gaming world. So that was my introduction to games like Call of Duty or playing FIFA online, or I don't know, the free online games. Like I used to play a lot of the game, what was it called? Defiance, which was like a tie-in with a movie that was coming out. It was like very unique. I don't know. I never watched the movie. I think it's with Daniel Craig. And yeah, it was this online, kind of like Destiny. Uh, it reminded me uh, a lot of Destiny. And yeah, I met like these two guys on there that were also from Flanders. And yeah, we played a lot of hours on that. And yeah, that was my introduction to the online gaming world. Which is funny because I have really good memories about it, but now I almost exclusively play offline games. I never play online games. So I am online, but I don't play online games. And then of course, last reason why I love the PS3 so much is the games themselves. I'm going to go through a couple here, but sometimes not just the games themselves, but just how affordable they are now. I talked earlier about like having a lot of SNES games still in box or PS1 games. Um, I have my PS1 collection here. We, I have a very big gaming collection, but I've never paid more than 10 bucks for a used game. I don't think, I, I can't remember at least. So I was able to like get a lot of like lots of games off of like sites like eBay or whatever, or at a yard sale. Someone was asking like one euro piece. They had like twenty games. I'm like, how about like ten for everything? And they just like said yes. Uh, at the thrift store, they they used to sell them for fifty cents a euro, whatever. And collecting wasn't always this popular, so pricing was just way more affordable. Of course. Now everyone knows about sites like uh, price charting, of course, and because a lot of people look a certain price, look a certain game up, the price goes up because it's more in demand, and the older a game gets, the the price also goes up, and people can just like see everything now, and that just makes it go up even more. So yeah, that wasn't always the case, and that's when I got most of my games. But now, if you want to collect, like. You have to either get really lucky or, yeah, you have to get the affordable consoles like Xbox 360 or the PlayStation 3 or now the 4 is going to go down in value um, as well if you want to start collecting for that. But, yeah, the, I, I, yeah, I love collecting for the PS3 because even now, uh, games in good condition, you're looking at like 5 to 10 bucks except for a couple of outliers, of course. But yeah, you used to be able to get so many games. Like, I got this in a yard sale for less than a buck, probably. And this is like a 50 euro game, but I would never pay that, no matter how good a game is, um, pay like 50 euros, because um, I wasn't able to afford it. Um, now, of course, if there's something I really, really want, uh, I might do that, but usually I try to look out for deals and not pay full price on them. So lastly, I just want to go through a couple of the games I used to play a lot and I put a lot of time in. And yeah, you can look at these as just recommendations. Um, maybe I'll include pricing. Um, I'm not sure about that yet. Um, 
and then you can see how affordable they really are. So games in no particular order. First, I have Infamous 1 and 2. Uh, these are incredible superhero games and you can make choices whether you want to go dark side or, or like be a good guy. And yeah, if you've never played this, definitely check them out. It's big open world city. You have these electric powers, kind of like mutants. They're very against people with superpowers and yeah, that's it. I, I, I don't think I've ever finished either of these, like complete, but I, I spent a lot of hours on this one. Next up, a fairly underrated game, in my opinion, which is Prototype. It's another one of those, I think it was a time back then, like open world superhero slash villain games. Uh, the mechanic in this was that you could kill anyone, civilian or whatever, and you would take their appearance, for example, and you would get like new attacks, like big claws or stuff like that. Just plain fun video game stuff. Yeah, like don't play this for the story or anything. It's just to have fun. Next up, I was talking about uh, playing a lot of co-op games. Resistance is one of those, um, which you can play the story with split screen and you can have it co-op uh, with someone next to you on the couch. And there's just something really fun about that. Uh, it's also a good story, good gameplay. Yeah, like the sticker uh, on here is still on there. It's like three euros from a Belgian version of GameStop. Yeah, you can still get these for three euros and have a lot of fun. Next up is an Assassin's Creed game. Um, Assassin's Creed 1 is the first one I played, uh, but I got tired of that one fairly quickly because uh, I think it was a little repetitive. I skipped Ezio um, for whatever reason, and I went straight to 3, and I have played Ezio by now. But uh, yeah, the 3 is still my favorite, probably because of nostalgic reasons. I also love the setting of this, the Revolutionary War uh, in the Americas. Um, yeah, it's just fascinating, the people you run into, it's just, yeah, it's just a really good game. Another one fairly underrated is Sonic Unleashed. People usually always shit on the 3D Sonic games, uh, rightfully so, a lot of them are really bad, like Sonic 06, even though I spent a lot of hours in that one too, because it was also co-op. Uh, we just tried to ignore all the bugs or stuff like that, or Sonic Boom, which is fairly unplayable uh, at launch. But yeah, I'm a huge Sonic fan, and Sonic Unleashed was really good. Uh, you play as Sonic, of course, and during the day, it's normal Sonic levels, speed and time trials and whatever. But during the night, you transform into a Sonic werewolf. And it's not about speed anymore. It's more like combat stuff. And yeah, it's just really fun. Uh, I have a Far Cry like, collection edition thing with like most of the Far Cry's. It's got Far Cry Classic, uh, Far Cry 2, 3, and then the Blood Dragon DLC. I've only played the third one. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal game. The villain in that, really good. It's very popular. Um, yeah, it's just a really good game. Open world, first person shooter, liberation type of game. Yeah, really recommend this. If you've never played it, it aged fairly well. You can still play this. Next up is a horror game, Dead Space. This is the first one. I've never played the second one. I, I think I have it, but I've never played it. And yeah, this was a re this blew me away, the mechanics. It's got like little laser things that you can chop the alien's limbs off. It's terrifying. The setting of this is just really good. Um, if you want to play this, just play the remake. I haven't played the remake, but I assume it's just better than playing the old version. Uh, I'm not a snob about that or anything. So if you want to, if you're interested in this, definitely look it up and see if you can get your hands on the remake, which is really well received. I haven't played it. So but yeah, that's space. Then uh, I have Spyro Dawn of the Dragon and I played all the original Spyros on the PS1. Uh, those were one of the first ones, first games we had. And yeah, I spent dozens of hours uh, on the f original ones. The new ones get a lot of shit, but I really like this one because it's also couch co-op. Uh, your buddy can play as Cinder or as Spyro if you want to play as Cinder, which had different power powers than Spyro. You could fly in this game, uh, but you had kind of like a chained 
like necklace to each other so you couldn't go too far and so you can just like fly off uh, without without your buddy or something. The different powers you could like change between the powers, like ice, fire, uh, poison. I'm just uh, saying stuff. And the story was fairly enjoyable. Graphics were really good too. And yeah, again, got this at a yard sale for like I don't I think three euros or something. And this one, went, this one's like one of the few ones that went up in value a little bit. But uh, yeah. Spyro Down Dragon. If you've never played this and you're a Spyro fan and you've kind of avoided this one because of all the bad rep it gets, I really recommend this. Next up is the God of War games. I know these released on the PS2, but I never owned them on the PS2. So I had I got this collection. I also have Volume 2, which has uh, God of War, the PSP games, uh, Ascension and... Chains of Olympus, I think, but I've never played those. Uh, I've played these, and then I've got a War 3, which released on the PS3. Uh, phenomenal games, really fun, uh, sometimes a little weird, uh, but yeah, it's with Greek mythology. I love that shit. I studied Latin in high school, so uh, and Greek, actually. So yeah, it was always fun to hear the names that I had in class than like, be in a video game, because yeah, that was kind of just interesting to me. So, yeah, I like the newer ones more, way more, actually, the Norse ones, but still very fun. Uh, next up, I have Lord of the Rings, War of the North. This is another one that is really good co-op. It's nothing to write home about. It's just if you love Lord of the Rings, if you love that world, you can play as, like, yeah, it says here on the box, create your own fellowship. So you can kind of create your own characters. And it's split screen. You can play with your buddy on the couch and you can destroy thousands of orcs and get through the story together. And there's just something about that. And I wish more games were like this. Next up is my favorite Star Wars game of all time. I really like the new Jedi uh, games, the Fallen Order and Survivor one. But there's just something about Star Wars The Force Unleashed. I've never played the sequel. I hear it's not great, but I want to play it anyway. Kind of know what the story is about. But yeah, you play as Darth Vader's apprentice. Um, it's not canon anymore since Disney, but you play as Darth Vader's apprentice. But that, four, that first level where you play as Darth Vader himself and you're just slashing through Wookiees and the, the way these force mechanics work, like we've never had that other than a little bit in the Lego games. But you could, yeah, pretty much pick up anything or anyone and just like throw them into oblivion or crush them or use your lightning powers and just wreak havoc and you could customize your appearance and your lightsaber and and the characters in this the acting is really good it's Sam Witwer I love Sam Witwer he is the voice of Darth Maul in the Clone Wars and the Rebels TV show he's also a Deacon St. John in the new Days Gone game, which is also very underrated. And yeah, the voice acting in this is just phenomenal. If you've never played this and you have a way of playing this, please do. It's really, really good. You agreed to stay away! Alive. Next up is probably pure nostalgia, but it's the first game we ever played on the PS3. And it's the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm game. Uh, this is the first one. I think by now it has like six games and then it has Naruto to Boruto or whatever. I've watched, I think, 10 episodes of Naruto in total, the first 10. Really liked it. Uh, just stopped watching. I uh, haven't watched a lot of anime. Never really got into it. But this game is just really good. Uh, me and my brothers always play this. There's so many characters to choose from. They all play very differently. They all have different powers or weapons or something. And I had never played like arena based fighting games. And uh, this was kind of the first one. And the, there's a Dragon Ball Z one that we really like too. Um, can't think of the name, it's one of them. But yeah, I really like this. Like the way it was 3D, we had never had that. It was always like just versus, and Tekken was kind of 3D, but not really, not like this. So yeah, the, I really recommend this. This series, the new ones are probably the same thing, but yeah, they're just plain fun. 
And next up is the Uncharted games. I played 1, 2, and 3 on PlayStation uh, 3, and then, of course, the fourth one. The fourth one is my favorite, uh, but of the PlayStation 3 games, an unpopular opinion, but I prefer the third one. Love the second one, but yeah, there's just, I was blown away by the graphics on this. This was so ahead of its time. You can still play this today, and maybe not on the PS5, but on the PS4, just think like, oh yeah, this came out on the PS4. It was just so ahead of its time. The gameplay is really good. Story was good, in my opinion. And yeah, there's just something about the Uncharted games. Uh, I love them. I'm a huge fan. And I hope someday we get more of it. It doesn't need to be with Drake, but just something. Because it's been a while now. But yeah. yeah. So that was a couple of uh, game recommendations I got for you there. Most of these I played like within the first year of getting my PS3. And... Yeah, I just have a very fond memory of them, and it's a big reason why I'm into collecting now. Which brings me to my next point, like, what got me into collecting? I think it's the PS3, because it's the first game I was able to pay my own, to pay for my own game, so I was just like, yeah, I'm going to get that, I'm going to get that, I'm going to get that. And I really had the feeling that, oh yeah, these are mine. And the reason why I left most of my SNES games is because my dad had bought them, so they're kind of his, even though he bought them for me and my brothers. Uh, they're like, we can't really, we're not going to split them. So I just left them there because I thought that was fair, <laughs> uh, even though I really want them. But the PS3 games, most of them I paid for myself. So I was just really proud of that to like build that first shelf of PS3 games in my collection. And yeah, just wanted more and more as it goes, right? So... Let me know if you would be interested in a full PS3 collection uh, video. I'm, I plan on doing it anyway, kind of like going over all my consoles, the games that, uh, that I have here with me. And yeah, and do that maybe for movies too, actually. So but yeah, if you made it this far, I know it's a long video. Uh, I know it's been a while since I recorded a video too. I just got like really busy all of a sudden. I hate that about myself. I upload two videos and then I don't upload for a month again. And then it's like, hey guys, I'm back, sorry. And it's like been like that for like a year now. I'm going to try and be better. But yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.